When it comes to riding a motorcycle well, seat time is not the same thing as skill development. Let me repeat that. Seat time is not the same thing as skill development. I've seen this scenario multiple times teaching a new rider class, and I'm sure if you read the comments in this video, you'll see other riding instructors who have seen the exact same thing. So a group of students are gathered to start a new rider class, and one of the first things you do is do introductions, and a rider introduces himself that he's been riding for years. He just needs to get legal and get his license. He goes on to talk about all the trips he's been on on a motorcycle, you know, that annual ride to Sturgis and all the motorcycles he's owned over all the years. He claims to have several thousand miles of experience and a lot of seat time riding a motorcycle. But when it comes time for the riding portion of the class, this guy struggles to ride a 250cc motorcycle in a controlled environment. He has multiple bad habits and he has a harder time learning the appropriate skills to ride better because he's been reinforcing his bad habits with years of riding poorly. You know, that's why I'm a firm believer that seat time is not and never will be the same thing as skill development. Think about this for a minute. You go on a typical Saturday morning ride. This involves gearing up, riding some curvy roads, having lunch somewhere and returning home. In the course of this ride, you had a few easy stops at traffic lights and stop signs. You rode through some straight sections of road and some areas with moderate curves. You mix these Saturday rides with the occasional longer trip where you're gone for a few days on your motorcycle. And if you ride with good road strategy, the odds are that you've had very few negative interactions with cars and other traffic around you. You can continue this same routine for 10 or 15 years with very few close calls if you ride with good road strategy. The truth is that very few riders crash when they're riding in a straight line with very little traffic, especially if they're riding within their skill set and within the limits of the road and their motorcycle and using good road strategy until one day they ride that same Saturday morning route and a deer that they had a chance to avoid runs out in front of them or a car pulls out in front of them, or a drunk driver crosses the center line and they need to swerve to avoid them, or there's gravel in a corner, or a whole host of other things that require skill and proper technique to keep the motorcycle upright. In those scenarios, a rider with 10 years of seat time and thousands of miles of experience, but avoidant skills that have not been practiced for 10 years are of no use to our rider and he or she crashes. If all you ever do is ride straight roads, easy curvy roads, normal stops in wide open predictable places, that is all you are ever training for and the only skills that you will ever develop. When you need avoidant skills, if you haven't practiced them, they won't be there. As soon as something out of the ordinary happens, as soon as you're caught off guard, and your health and life depends on it, your ability to get the motorcycle stopped or your ability to swerve or your ability to get through that cornering line mid-corner when something changes in the corner or emergency braking in the corner, if you haven't practiced those skills, you crash. It's for those same reasons that a rider with thousands of miles of seat time comes into a new rider class and they have huge struggles when riding in a controlled environment, when the instructor says, stop this motorcycle right here, corner within the confines of this, break in a corner, all of those U-turns, all of those controlled skills techniques that that rider has not practiced and no longer knows how to do. The sad thing is that many of these riders fail to understand that their utter failure to ride well in a new rider class is a sign of their riding deficiencies but instead they blame the motorcycle, they blame the instructor, or they make comments, and I've heard this, that these things aren't needed to ride out on the street. And I kind of agree with that statement. They're not usually needed until you need them, and then it's too late. I see comments from these same riders frequently commenting on these videos here on MC Rider. They may disagree with something that I teach or say in their justification for their comment, is that they've ridden thousands of miles and they've never needed that skill or that technique. In my book, how many years you've ridden and how many miles you've traveled 
are an entirely separate conversation from how well you can handle your motorcycle and use the proper techniques to handle your motorcycle correctly. If a rider masters the following skills, I believe they're at a huge advantage over the rider with thousands of miles of seat time and years of experience. Emergency braking, swerving, cornering, and slow speed skills like U-turns within 18 to 20 feet and performing a slow race. But it's important not to just be able to perform the task, but to do so using the correct technique. Technique is huge when performing these skills. A rider may be able to get around the corner out on the street, but if they've got the poor technique of not looking through the corner, if they're looking down at the ground or their front tire, it gets them in trouble mid-corner whenever a deer runs out in the road or there's gravel in the road because they've developed the bad habit and they're not looking through that corner. So I always mention slow speed skills when I talk about skill development. And many people ask why slow speed skills are so important. Because having slow speed skills rarely saves your life out on the street. Very few riders have died because they've had to duck walk their motorcycle at a U-turn. They might look dumb, but their life is usually not in jeopardy. But a rider's inability to perform basic slow speed skills is an indicator that their technique is lacking. The techniques you develop when working on slow speed skills are life-saving and transfer to many other aspects of riding. The techniques you develop when practicing slow speed control are good head and eye placement, clutch and throttle control, proper braking techniques, and a better understanding of your motorcycle balance. All of these techniques translate to many other riding disciplines that are life-saving and as an added benefit, you get to practice them in a parking lot with slower speed, with much less risk to you and your motorcycle. While the solution to this problem is simple, first take a training class. You know, basic rider courses are fairly easy to find and they're not just for new riders. I've had a whole lot of riders come back on an annual basis and take classes with me in the past. Other classes may take a little more searching, but you can find advanced classes. Jerry Palladino offers a good class, so do a search for Ride Like a Pro. There are pro rider classes in many locations. Total Control is another good option. I used to teach the Total Control class. And on the higher end of the pricing scale, you've got things like the Yamaha Champions class. You know, they're a little more expensive, but from what I've heard, is well worth the time. I rode to Oklahoma a few years ago to take a free class offered by the state of Oklahoma. So there are training opportunities available. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to find, and that's why I've started a training map on MC Rider to help riders locate motorcycle training classes in their area. So this is a new addition to MC Rider, so the map is far from complete at this time. I think I've got you know 30 or 40 entries on the map at this point. I'm hoping there will be thousands more added to that map in the near future. So if you're an instructor or you run a dedicated practice session that has a web presence and a zip code or a city and state where you practice or train at, you can add to the training program on that map and get your site listed or your training class listed on that map. So details can be found at mcrider.com class. So you can view the map and see if there's any training in your area. If you run a class, you can add your class to that map so that others can find you more easily. In addition to taking a class in person, members of MC Rider get access to the field guide that has practice skills that you can work on on any open parking lot. These focus on the proper technique and you'll find a whole lot of technique in the description of those exercises. You know, thousands of riders and other rider coaches are also members of the forums, and that's a great place for you to ask questions and to get help with the single-minded purpose of everyone becoming a better rider. So if you're making additions to the training map or you find that map useful for finding training in your area and you're not already a member, I hope you'll consider becoming a member of MC Rider and support my efforts to support the motorcycle community and help riders find training that will help them be safer out on the road. There's a link next to the member map down towards the bottom on the right hand side that you can become a member of MC Rider. So you can find those details again at mcrider.com class and you can view the training map and add entries to that there. 
Till next week, guys, it's Kevin with MC Ryder, and I'll see you on the road.